Hey, how, how's it going, everybody? Are you looking for a Terraria playthrough where some guy jumps around while his minions do all the work? Regardless of your answer, check me out. Now this, this is what a summoner should look like. I mean, just look at me. I look, I look amazing. This is the Secrets of the Shadows mod, and it adds tons of new things like weapons, bosses, areas to explore, wh wh whatever this is, and much, much more. Now, I know this video was supposed to be 100 Days in Fargo Soul Mod Eternity Mode, but I got angry and needed a break. But just so you know, it will be out soon. For the meantime, feel free to kick back, relax, and enjoy the minion carnage. As soon as I spawned in on day one, I noticed a bar labeled Void above my head. After some research, I learned that there are weapons that combine regular damage with Void damage, and it deals more damage but hurts you when you run out of Void. I also noticed a little base right next to me, but in between me and the base was a flowering slime, and it was it was absurdly strong for where I was at. After defeating it, I got a fragment of nature. I went downstairs a bit more and found a room filled with gold, but before I could get it, I got cut short by a boulder trap. I, I got baited by a boulder trap. Afterwards, I got right to mining. Once I realized this cave was a dead end, I just killed myself to get out, but back at the base, I was ambushed by a couple of the flowering slimes that I mentioned earlier, and I died a whole bunch of times, but eventually I defeated them. I finished the day off with more mining. I spent all of day two mining, and only took a little break to find a marigold, and use that marigold plus the fragments of nature that I already had to make the flower spell, because at first I wanted to be a mage. I continued mining into day three. Once I had gotten home, I smelted all my ores and noticed that I can make a shit ton of void weapons right off the bat. I made the platinum soul staff and the gold arc staff, and one of them steals life and one of them hurts enemies more. They're, they're both fucking amazing. After crafting these weapons, I went right back to mining, and as soon as I got back down, I was ambushed by an earthen construct. I, I almost killed it, but it had multiple phases, so I ended up dying. I finished off my day by making the silver chainmail and silver greaves. On day 4, I of course continued mining, but I ended up finding this weird ore deposit and it gave me a bunch of vibrant shards when I mined it, what, whatever those do. After mining that ore deposit, I was officially sick of this cave and I wanted to look for another one. I ended up finding one a bit to the right, but it had some desert temple looking thing in it and it wasn't the normal desert temple from Vanilla Terraria because I couldn't mine the blocks, so I went to the surface to investigate. On the surface, I found a normal desert temple that allowed me to mine the blocks, I ended up getting a flying carpet, but under it were those same blocks that I couldn't mine. After going a bit deeper into the vanilla temple, I found some room with a giant ruby in it that I couldn't access. I tried my best to like mine around and see if there was some sort of entrance, but there just wasn't. I even tried mining the purple inside part of it and it made a really weird flesh noise, so I assumed it had something to do with like the crimson or the corruption. I decided to just leave it alone for now, and when I got back up to the surface, I noticed why I couldn't get in. It's because there's another temple entrance right next to the vanilla one that is locked, and the only way to get in is with this key if, that you get from either defeating the Brain of Cthulhu or the Eater of Worlds. After that whole temple fiasco, I had to deal with a stupid ass blood boon. During this blood moon, I ended up turning the vibrant shards that I got from earlier into vibrant alloys, which I then turned into the Geostorm, and it was fucking awesome. On day 5, I was still dealing with the stupid ass blood moon, and I experienced for the first time the void bar killing me. I ran out of void, and it just drained my health. After dealing with the blood moon, I got to building NPC housing. I then went into my basement, minding my own business, you know, crafting up a storm, when I was attacked by some fucking alien thing. Turns out, it was just like the earthen construct before, but it was a nature one, and once I broke its shell, a nature spirit came out, but I got scared and ran away like a little bitch. I then pretty much goofed off for the rest of the day. The next day I started the elevator and I began looking for more life crystals while doing it because I'm ready to fight the bosses, I just need more health to actually be able to survive. I gave up on the elevator for now to find life crystals easier in like an actual cave, so I went to the jungle and I found a few well in the jungle but died right before getting another one. Once I got home I began waiting for night and doing simple tasks like more housing because I wanted to wait and fight the Eye of Cthulhu. Super early on day 7, I defeated the Eye of Cthulhu and upgraded the flower spell to the Scatter Seed. It, it honestly wasn't much better. Afterwards, I went to the Crimson and lost to the Brain of Cthulhu, but I wasn't even trying to win. I just wanted a few tissue samples so I could use the tissue samples and make a mysterious key to open the temple door, but it still won't open, and I think that's because I actually haven't defeated the Brain of Cthulhu yet. I then ended the day finishing the elevator. 
I spent some time super early on day 8, gathering a bunch of stars to increase my mana. After maxing out my mana, I still needed to get hearts, so I murdered the nurse and hoped that she would drop a life crystal. But she didn't, so I just murdered her for no reason. After that pretty intentional homicide, I used grav potions to look for wings at the sky islands, and tell me why 3 out of the 4 islands I found were all the shitty lake ones. After getting wings and landing on the surface, I found an altar looking thing that required a key to be used in the snow biome. Surrounding this altar looking thing was frigid ore. I mined a bunch of it, but I can't use it until I get some sort of steel that all the goblins from the goblin army drop. While I was doing this, another one of those weird construct things attacked, but I was too slow to defeat it. I finished off my day defeating the Eye of Cthulhu again, ju just for fun. The next day, I spent a lot of time looking for hearts, and I ended up finding two more. After only finding two life hearts, I gave up and went to go make magic storage, and I couldn't make all of it, I only made the heart portion, I couldn't make the crafting interface, so I pretty much just have a really big chest. I then spent the rest of the day throwing everything in there and just organizing my house. I spent the morning of day 10 trying to defeat the Brain of Cthulhu, but I just couldn't beat it, and it made me want to change my class to ranged maybe, so I made the Vibrant Pistol and I thought it was pretty good, but I still lost. So I thought maybe melee, so I made the Cardiac Collapse, which was fucking amazing, but I still lost, but this, this, this time it was okay, because I'm just stupid. Now I completely forget why I'm stupid in this situation, it just says that in my notes, so I'm, I'm just gonna roll with it. I then spent the rest of the day trying to make new ranged weapons because I think I want to be the ranged class, so I made this berry thing and it only did 4 damage so I knew it was going to be shit, but it was the upgraded version which I knew was going to be pretty good. I spent most of the next day in the jungle getting stingers and spores to upgrade the berry bombs, the weapon I just made, into the spore bombs and it was so nice after I had made it. I then began using the weapon against the blood moon and I, it, was, it, was, it was amazing, it was awesome, I was just shredding through enemies. During the Blood Moon, I got a Zombie Hand, which is an equipable that allows me to kill NPCs with melee weapons, and since I'm ranged and I know there's a certain NPC that drops a ranged weapon, I know what I had to do. I, I, I didn't even get the paintball gun, and that's now two NPCs I have completely murdered for no reason. On day 12 after the Blood Moon, I defeated the Brain of Cthulhu and got this awesome sword called the Vertebreaker, and it was easily my best weapon. The only flaw was that it was a void weapon, so I couldn't use it all the time. Now that the Brain of Cthulhu had been defeated and I had the key, I was finally going to check out the temple. And once I was in there, there was a whole bunch of new shit in there, including a debuff that I got, which increases the spawn rate of enemies like no tomorrow. There were a shit ton of snakes, whatever the hell this thing is, a bunch of lost souls, and so much more to look at. At the end of the day, my trip to the temple was cut short by an earthen construct. The next day, I went right back to the temple and ended up dying to something called a wall mimic, which spawned after I broke these like corrupted walls. It, it was kind of it was kind of stupid to be honest. With it being a temple and all, I noticed that there were hidden rooms behind some of the infected pyramid bricks. So I had to mine through those and defeat all the wall mimics that came under my way. Though, for whatever reason, there are some rooms I just can't get into because I can't break the blocks, but I ended up finding a chest in the ceiling that gave me a limited use pickaxe to mine some of the pyramid bricks, and with me being the absolute dumbass that I am, I used all of them on this wall to my left, because it, it, it literally looks like there's something that, that there's going to be something behind the wall, but there was not a thing. Because I had wasted all the pickaxes, I got stuck in the ceiling and had to recall home and go right back. Once I was back, I began mining into this infected looking room that had keystone shards growing all over the walls. Right in the middle of this room was a big keystone, but when it mined, it summoned enemies, like in waves. There were five waves per crystal, and it the enemies would increase per wave, so it started out with like two enemies, then go to three, then go to four, five, six. And after dealing with them all, I got a ruby keystone. I then spent the entire next day still exploring the temple, because it is just so, it's so fucking big. I, I killed lots of enemies, I died a couple of times, I explored a whole bunch of areas, I finally got a ranged weapon from one of the chests called the Royal Magnum, and it is just so, so good. And I ended up getting two melee weapons, I forget their names off the top of my head, but they were really good, and I'm considering just going melee. 
I spent all of day 15 and 16 doing the exact same things, and there, there were a few notable things. On day 15, I saw this creepy looking shrine type thing through the wall, but I couldn't access it. And on day 16, I found a throne room filled to the brim with gold and riches, but it had a creepy looking coffin in the center. The coffin of a pharaoh. I, I was curious what the coffin would do, and when I right clicked it, I accidentally summoned the first boss of this mod, the Pharaoh's Curse. I, I died, but I managed to do some pretty good damage. On day 17, I, I thought I had defeated the Pharaoh's Curse, but I guess there is a second phase. With as hard as this boss already is, there's a second phase, and it, it just makes everything dark. You can't see anything in the room other than the boss. So how, how, how the fuck am I supposed to fight it if I can't see? The second phase of the boss fight pissed me off so much that I ended up just destroying that asshole's tomb and turning it into just an actual arena. Like, I removed everything from it. But I still lost. I spent the rest of the day and the beginning of day 18 just getting Hellstone. Once I thought I had enough ore, I went back up and started making the Molten Armor set. And just as I was about to finish making it, the Goblin Army attacked. I, I defeated them with ease, by the way, and headed right back to the temple. Once back at the temple, I ended up losing again to the Pharaoh's Curse, and I decided to give up for now and fight the actual first boss of the mod, the Putrid Pinky. I ended up defeating it first try, but it was much harder than expected. Like, I, I thought I was going to breeze through it, but I, I struggled a bit. I used the Goop 1 Corrosive Jelly Drop to make the Peanut Repeater, and I ended up fighting the Putrid Pinky again. And while it's a good weapon, I just don't have that many peanuts. On day 19, I made the Goop Wood Helix, and it's pretty good. It wasn't better than the Peanut Repeater, but it, it was alright. I went back to the temple and fought the Pharaoh's Curse again, and I almost beat it. I got it to 7%, so after I died, I went right back to the temple again and started the final Pharaoh's Curse fight.
I had finally lifted the curse off of this poor pharaoh, despite me stealing all of his riches and everything. And it was honestly one of the coolest boss fights I've ever done. It, I don't know, it felt so unique to me. From the pharaoh, I ended up getting a heart in the jar, and it allows me to curse enemies within a radius around me, and summon souls upon enemy death to seek out other enemies. I also got a handful of cursed matter that I used to make the spirit tracer. I ended up testing it against the king slime, and it was, it was alright. It, it was alright. On day 19, I decided, and this is a quote from my notes, to fuck the Skeletron without an arena. So on day 20, I fucked the Skeletron without an arena. Afterwards, I began exploring the dungeon to see if anything new was added, and there was literally not a single thing was added. Once I was back home, I ended up having to deal with the Goblin Army, and after defeating it, I remembered that I needed a handgun for the upgraded version of the Royal Magnum, so I went right back to the dungeon to go get it. Afterwards, I began looking at the next boss, the Advisor, and it requires me to destroy four otherworldly constructs of the planetarium. Now, for whatever reason, when I heard the word planetarium, I thought of the ocean, so I went to the right ocean and found this strange little island with an obelisk that says it cracks under sunlight. So I took it because it, I, I thought it wasn't a quote, so I took it, put it outside to see what it would do in the morning, and obviously nothing happened. Anyways, I went to the other ocean and there was nothing, obviously, because I'm supposed to be looking in the fucking sky. I spent the rest of day 20 looking in, in the sky this time, in space, for the planetarium. While looking for this place, on day 21 I ended up finding a bunch of chests that are usually locked up in the dungeon, but they were up in the sky, for whatever reason. Afterwards, I found the planetarium, and it looked super cool, it was all futuristic, it looked awesome. I then began destroying the four otherworldly constructs, and it summoned the advisor. I lost, but I, I got quite far, the only issue is that I'm not doing enough damage, so I began researching weapons back at home. This is where I was thinking about switching classes again for like the fourth time this playthrough. In my notes, I said, no, I will commit to Ranger, but you guys have all heard the intro, you you know what's going to happen, so. I, at, at the end of the day, I ended up finding this promising bow called the Sharanga, and I was going to make it, so on day 22, I got all the materials and I made it, but I kept losing to the advisor, regardless of what would happen. So on day 23, I was trying out melee, and I, I still lost, but melee is significantly better. I got so much further in such a short amount of time. Since I was now apparently switching to melee, I saw this weapon called the Platinum Scythe, and I made it because the attacks permanently curse enemies for 4 damage per second, and it stacks up 10 times. Even after making this, I still lost, but I just barely lost, so right after this, I went right back up and fought the advisor for the final time.
I had finally defeated the advisor, and after it died, its spirit came out, and once I killed that, a spaceship known as the Collector came down and turned it into three dissolving Aethers. Now, I know I haven't, like, mentioned this at all yet, but there are these, like, dissolving elements that you get from the elemental constructs, and they're used for various different weapons and equipment and shit later on. After opening the goodie bag from the advisor, it gave me some keys for all the chests that are around the area. I ended up getting a bunch of ores and potions, but the main thing I got was a star shot crossbow, and it is very, very good. Afterwards, I upgraded my spore bombs to the arc light orbs, and they I haven't tested them yet, but they seem awesome. I finished off the day making the Hell Highway, and I made it using an insta bridge that creates one large platform across the entire world. On day 25, I decided that I wanted a summon just because pretty much all of the armors from this mod, and all of the equipment as well, are for summoners. I ended up choosing the Otherworldly Spirit Staff, because I think it's going to be one of those purple construct things from the planetarium that you need to kill before fighting the advisor. The only issue is that I needed a hard light alloys, and for that I needed twilight plates, so I ended up going back up to the planetarium to farm for twilight plates, because they all drop from all of the enemies, but this took way too goddamn long. So I ended up deciding to defeat the advisor again to speed things up. And while killing constructs, one of them dropped a phase cannon. And this weapon was so good. I'm so glad it was ranged. It, it's, a, it's an amazing weapon for where I'm at. It can shoot through walls. It does tons of damage. And I used it to defeat the, uh, the advisor no problem. After this, I got enough twilight plates and made the otherworldly spirit staff. And I ended up using it to help me farm for voodoo demons. And this staff was actually just amazing. It was probably the best summoner staff I've ever had. This staff single-handedly made me want to try out other summons, so I ended up making the Terminator Acorns, and it turns out, since the Otherworldly Spirit Staff is using Void, it doesn't take up a minion slot, it just takes up the Void, so I can still have the mechanized squirrels to fight for me. This is why I decided that I was going to become a summoner. I spent the morning of the next day getting the unlimited summoner buff so that I can have another squirrel. Since this summoner idea sounded so good to me, I ended up ditching farming the Voodoo Demons for now to defeat the advisor one last time in order to complete the Twilight Assassin armor set. There's way too much to read for this armor set, so I'm going to go ahead and let you read it right here, but the gist of it is that I now have two Void Minions, five regular minions, and a Hollow Eye to fight for me. After putting on the armor, I went back down to hell to continue farming for Voodoo Demons, and my minions are fucking dominating. They kill shit before I can even see it on my screen is how good they are. During all this farming, all I could think about was how easy the Wall of Flesh fight was going to be. It was going to be so unfair for him. Eventually, I did get the Voodoo Doll, and I fought the Wall of Flesh, and that fight wasn't even fair. Like, I, I felt so bad for the Wall of Flesh when it was summoned, and I had no idea it was about to get rocked that hard. Like, I, I actually fucked it so hard. To make things even better, literally everything I got from the goodie bag from the Wall of Flesh was summoner related. I got both the firecracker and the summoner emblem. After the Wall of Flesh fight, I wanted to increase my void so that I can summon another void minion, so I need to get fragments of evil to make this consumable called the Scarlet Crescent which will increase my void by 50. Now for whatever reason I thought the Wall of Flesh dropped the fragments of evil, so I ended up killing it two more times and didn't get any of them, so I guess I just killed it twice for fun. On day 27, I farmed some enemies for a bit, I got enough fragments of evil, and made the Scarlet and Crescent. But that wasn't enough, because each other worldly spirit took up 75 fucking void, so I needed at least 25 more void. Now since the Scarlet Crescent is the Crimson version, I decided to make the Violet Crescent, which was the Corruption version, but after I made it, it wouldn't even let me consume it, so I guess they consider them as one. I finished off my day breaking some altars. I spent the morning of day 28 getting through the hard mode ores, but I ended up stopping after making a mithril anvil to determine what piece of equipment I should fill the empty gap with because I used the demon heart from the wall of flesh. After a bit of research, I found this shield that combines with a bunch of other shields to make an awesome shield later on, and I really want it. I decided that I'm going to make the chiseled barrier first. For this, I need to get the marble defender, the arcane aqueduct, and the tiny planet, which I already have. I decided that I was going to go in order, so I began getting the marble to make the marble defender. I then moved on to getting the water bolt and the fragments of tide for the arcane aqueduct. I ended up getting the fragments from the skeletons in the dungeon, but no matter how many books I mined down there, I just could not seem to find the water bolt. 
After a long time spent looking, I finally found it on day 29 and made the chisel barrier. Afterwards, I continued researching to see what I could replace my heart in a jar with, and I found this thing called a platform generator, and it allows you to carry around said trees on these platforms. I obviously ended up making it, and it is awesome, but my issue is that I didn't have a sentry to put them on, so I began looking for that tavern keep so I can actually use the platform generator, but I couldn't find him, so I'll keep looking after I defeat the destroyer. Well, making the arena for the destroyer, the tavern keep just so happened to spawn right under me, right next to the house. It was such a, it was such a funny coincidence. I then, instead of fighting the destroyer, did the old one's army, and the platform generator works amazingly. Once that was done, the next day I bought the lightning R rod to see if it was any better, and it looked so funny in the platforms. Afterwards, I decided that I wanted to reforge all of my equipment to get warding on it like I usually do, so I ended up going back to the temple in the desert because I remembered that all of the gold from the pharaoh's tomb I ended up putting in the dresser inside the pharaoh's tomb and just left it there. So I went back there to get it, and while I was there, I murdered the pharaoh's curse because fuck that pharaoh. I then reforged some equipment to give me more void instead of warding, so now I can have a third otherworldly spirit. On day 31, I defeated the destroyer. Now that I had the souls of might, I decided that I wanted to make the title spirit staff, but in order to make it, I needed a dissolving deluge. So I went to the ocean, and I fought a construct over there, and then came back home and made it. I then needed to test the staff, so I used it against the old one's army, and it, it was good, but I couldn't beat it, and I'm not sure if the title spirits are better than the other world spirits. Afterwards, I spent the rest of my day farming for souls of light to make the mechanical eye, and I determined that the otherworldly staff is much better. I spent all of day 32 farming the brain of Cthulhu for money and using that money to reforge everything I own. At the end of the night, I defeated the place. I spent the entire next day fighting the Queen Slime in an attempt to get the Blade Staff, but I never ended up getting it. On day 34, I defeated the Skeletron Prime. After my victory, I headed to the Underworld to fight the Construct down there to get the Dissolving Nether to make the Inferno Spirit Staff. I ended up losing a couple of times, but I just made a bed down there so that when I died, it wouldn't despawn. So I guess I kind of cheesed it, but it's whatever. When I came back up, the pirates started to invade, which was the perfect time to test out this new summon, and it was just amazing. After my swift victory against the pirates, I spent the rest of the day farming demon eyes for a flag. On day 35, I finally got the flag and turned it into a black lens so that I could make the optic staff. I then decided that I wanted to make the frost key to summon the next boss on my list, Polaris, so I ended up going to get a frost core. Once I had the frost key, I went back to that little portal thing in the snow biome and summoned Polaris, but I'm not going to even make a boss fight about this because honestly it was an unbelievably disappointing boss fight. I was expecting it to be way harder. I then spent the rest of my day trying to upgrade my chiseled barrier to the bulwark of the ancients. On day 36, I made the Olympian Aegis and the Ankh Shield, so all that was left was the Terminal Cluster, which is just a combination of a bunch of dissolving stuff. Now, I made the mistake in assuming that all of these were going to be normal constructs, but the Chaos Construct proved me wrong, because once I defeated it, it summoned the Lux, a post Plantera boss. I was able to dodge it for a good bit, but I then obviously died. I was left still wanting to upgrade something of mine, so I set out to look for an Anklet of the Wind to finally upgrade my Spectre Boots. I ended up searching the jungle for the rest of the day, opening chest after chest after chest, and I found absolutely nothing. I spent day 37 doing the exact same thing, but still couldn't find anything. I did end up finding a sick mining site for vibrant ore. I mean, I don't need it anymore, but it felt almost necessary to just take all the ore anyway. After spending like 40 minutes trying to find this anklet, I ended up just giving up and making the Plantera Arena. I ended up spending all of day 38 doing this, but by the end of day 38, I had defeated the Plantera. Since the Plantera had been defeated, I was finally able to buy the Anklet of Wind and upgrade my boots like four times. I first made the Lightning Boots, then Frost Spark Boots, then Terror Spark Boots, and now the new upgrade, the Flash Spark Boots. What the Flash Spark Boots do is that when I start running, I blast forward super fast, and at first I thought it was awesome, but it ended up being a pain in the ass later on. I went to the dungeon to get ectoplasm for a few things, such as to summon the pumpkin moon, get the raven staff, and upgrade my platform generator. Once back at home, I made this thing called a wisp in the bottle, and despite it doing like 90 damage, it couldn't even kill a blue slime, so I scrapped it. The next day, I summoned the frost moon super duper early, trying to get helicopter parts for a summon weapon called a cruise collar, but I didn't get any. 
later on i decided that i wanted to increase my void some more so that i could have more summons and i ended up finding this thing called the void and ankh that increases my void by 20 and i can use up to five of them so i went right back to the temple in the desert to get cursed matter and make the void and ankh while i was there i obviously murdered the fair because fuck him or her i i don't even know i can't tell behind all the wrapping now that I had what I needed, I was just about to leave before an evil construct attacked me, so I beat its ass and took its Dissolving Umbra. As it turns out, I can turn the Dissolving Umbra into a new summon called the Evil Spirit Staff. I went home and made it along with all the Void and Onks. The staff ended up working beautifully, and I can now have two of the Evil Spirits thanks to the increase in my Void. On day 42, I noticed that this mod has a bunch of potions to offer, and I wanted to get the unlimited buff for a bunch of them, but since I can't buy them from the potion lady, I'm gonna have to start fishing myself. Since these are new potions, they obviously added new fish to make these potions, and there's no information online anywhere about the whereabouts of these fish, so I'm just gonna have to find them myself. For fishing, I would obviously need a decent fishing pole, so I reached into my storage and pulled out the twilight fishing pole. Before starting all this fishing that I was going to have to do, I dealt with the stupid ass solar eclipse because I was hoping to get the daily sphere staff, but unfortunately I didn't get it in like the short amount of time that I did it, and I got really annoyed so I just cancelled the event. Alright, back to potions. I ended up buying a bunch of flowers and crafting with what I already had, and I ended up making the unlimited buff for rough skin, increases defense by 4 and damage by 4%, blue fire, killed enemies explode into flames for 40% of the damage dealt to them on the killing blow, Brittle, getting hit surrounds you with ice shards, and Vibe, increases attack speed by 20% and life regen by 4 when not moving. It also increases attack speed by 5% while moving. To finish off my night, I summon the Pumpkin Moon so I can try and get the Raven Staff instead of the Deadly Sphere Staff. On day 43, I began fishing for potions, but I ended up giving up super quickly because after doing the achievement for 200 fishing quests, I, I am sick of fishing. Since I quit fishing, I only made one more unlimited buff that required no fish, the Ripple Potion that periodically shoots waves all around me. Now, when I made this, I didn't know that I was going to make a noise every time it shot out and I wasn't wearing headphones for like, this entire playthrough, so I'm sorry for the noise that you're going to hear for the rest of this video. I finished off my day by defeating the Golem and it was super duper easy, but my only issue is that I totally forgot about the Lux and the Subspace Serpent which are bosses that I'm supposed to defeat before the Golem. The morning of the next day, I began attempting the Lux, and I was getting just about nowhere, so I moved on and started attempting the Subspace Serpent, and I was also getting just about nowhere. Instead of continuing to fight these bosses unprepared, I did the Pumpkin Mood again to try getting the Raven Staff. I got the Raven Staff on day 45, and it is so much better, I do so much more damage. Afterwards, I began trying to defeat the Lux for the entire day, but I was getting absolutely nowhere. This continued on for like the next three days, I just couldn't get anywhere on the Lux. I tried over and over and over, but no matter what I did, I just could not get further. What I did learn is that the Lux is a bunch of moves that it seems to rotate in some random order, and the further that I get on like most of my runs is because it goes in a certain order on those moves. And if I can get the Lux to 50% of its health, it'll skip some of those other ones. On day 48, I gave up on the Lux again, and this time I just wanted to move on and I went to go fight the Lunatic Cultist, but I can't even beat them. On day 49 is when I finally decided that I need to stop goofing around to become more powerful. I began reforging all of my equipment to almost all warding, I summoned the Pumpkin Moon to get more spooky wood in order to make the spooky armor, I combined the Necromatic Scroll with the Hercules Beetle and made a Papyrus Scarab for an extra minion and extra damage, and I summoned the Martian Invasion to get a Xeno Staff. On day 50, I started the Old One's Army to hopefully defeat it and get enough medallions to buy a better sentry. I ended up getting enough medals to buy the last tier of the Ballista Staff, and after reforging it, it does over 300 damage. I finished off my day by trying to defeat the Lux again. The next day I was still trying, and with my final Electromagnetic Lure, I defeated the Lux.
I got so unbelievably lucky with that fight. I cannot believe I died just as the death animation for the Lux started. It was it was insane. From the Lux, I got a very small amount of these phase bars, and I used these phase bars to make the Chaos Spirit Staff. With the Lux out of the way, I now knew I was powerful enough to take on the Subspace Serpent. So I began trying to defeat it, and I kept dying at this weird eye part where it would just center in on the eye, and there would be these spinning things around. You'd have to dodge them, and they would hurt a lot, and it was annoying. The next day, I decided to defeat the Lux a couple more times to get more phase bars, and it is significantly easier with the Chaos Spirit. The Chaos Spirit goes so hard. I ended up using those phase bars to make a new summon called the Ethereal Scepter, and it summons an Ethereal Flame, and perfect timing because I needed money to reforge it, so I use it on like 20 Brain of Cthulhu's, and just to look at these little flames go. I finished off the day making the laziest arena in hell for the Subspace Serpent. On day 53, I got so close to defeating the Subspace Serpent. It, it had 1% of its health left. It had like 2,000 health left. Eventually, I started my final fight with the Subspace Serpent. Now, I don't know why, but for whatever reason, the actual hard part of the boss fight didn't even happen. But what, whatever, I'm, I'm just gonna take it. I'm just gonna take it. It ended up dropping a whole bunch of Sanguite Scales, which I ended up using to upgrade my Flash Spark Boots to the Subspace Boosters, and they are so much better. I love being able to actually time my dashes instead of them happening whenever. I finished off my day going to hell to farm Lesser Wisps to try getting the Book of Virtues. The next day, I gave up on trying to get the Book of Virtues because the Lesser Wisps just would not drop it. But hey, since I was down there, all the enemies in hell now drop Sanguite Scales, and so I had plenty of them to make the Void Space Aura Staff. This aura was awesome because all it did was buff me as long as I'm in it, and if I just threw it on the platforms that I had to my sides, it, it was perfect. Afterwards, I defeated the Lunatic Cultist, took down the Vortex, Stardust, and Solar Pillars all within the same day. I was doing it super duper fast. I made the Asphalt Path and took down the final pillar and defeated the Moon Lord. All in one day. All with all my summons. It was it was so easy. It was such a breeze. I defeated the game, but you're not a summoner without Stardust Armor. So I defeated the Moon Lord again so that I'd have enough Luminite to make the Stardust Armor. And with that, I had become the ultimate summoner.